Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks so much to our Patreons and the rest of you who are active down in the comments. And to Devolver Digital for this review copy. Today we'll be looking at the interesting Piku Niku on Nintendo Switch. Piku Niku has a truly delightful little story. You take on the role of what is initially considered by the locals a mythical beast with them running at the sheer and terrible sight of you. Things take a slight turn south, but correct themselves in due course. The world is currently under the influence of a tyrannical and seemingly very generous leader. He lavishes coins upon the people in exchange for their crops, goods and occasionally citizens. The cutscenes are excellently handled with just the right levels of humour, strangeness and truth, but all the while with a very familiar tale. It seems to me an allegory for our consumerist society and the occasional mentions of the people being so rich in coin but really missing the taste of food that they've grown was remarkably apt for such a bizarre tale and definitely might reflect a certain government that we are all aware of. Dialogue options can be selected at times, giving the perhaps illusory impression that you have some choice and say with how the game proceeds. You do at least feel that you have placed your own stamp on proceedings. Throughout the experience you will find yourself rising up against these powers with the help of some friends, from a troop of gorilla leaves to worms and don't forget these guys, whatever they are. Aside from the main story, you will find a few smaller side quests, usually given out when you leave the beaten path, such as when you find a secret passage underground, only to stumble into the house of a boulder. <laughs> Who then leads you on a merry goose chase of hide and seek, of course, Makes perfect sense, I know. Some indie games go too far with the self-referential humour, but I found Pikaniku's writing to be some of the best I've seen. There are jokes here for everyone, if you've the knowledge and capacity to understand them. And more often than not, they don't detract from the serious undertones of the whole experience. I loved the story. It scores 19 out of 20. This is an exploration-based puzzle platformer that also has some Metroidvania elements like backtracking and unlocking new skills to progress. You control the beast, who turns out to be not too scary at all, but who does have a very peculiar and particular set of skills. Namely, he can jump, kick, uh, and roll. I know, right, you're not exactly blown away, but the thing is the game controls perfectly. The physics-based nature of the space means rolling down a hill feels exciting, and kicking an object to get it where you need it to be is satisfyingly accurate. Much of the game involves platforming to some degree, but you will use such strange and left-field thinking to get there, such as enraging someone to force them into attacking you, sending you flying up to a higher platform. You will find objects along the way which go into your inventory, accessible via the RZ and LZ triggers. It is a very simple system and works well. Things I enjoyed about the controls are how tight everything feels. Combined with how silky smooth it runs, it just feels good to play. Occasionally through your travels, some delightful, quirky mini-games are interwoven into the story, requiring you to overcome a challenge that will more often than not leave you with a huge grin on your face, like beating a robot in a dance-off. <laughs> searching for a key buried in a dried up riverbed by playing a retro arcade game or simply trying to outrun a giant mechanical crop eating robot for your freedom fighter friends to explode. Yeah. 
While the gameplay might seem off the wall, and it undoubtedly is, you are rarely put into a situation without the tools you need to overcome. The manner in which you gain these new abilities is what leads me on to describing it as having some Metroidvania elements. At certain points you will gain a new hat or other facially decorative items, very Mario I know. These can be selected with LZ and worn at your leisure. One such example later in the game is the watering hat that lets you get to areas you previously couldn't reach by watering the plants with the hat with a simple press of the Y button. These little challenges are reinforced by the reliance on physical puzzles that gets progressively harder but never feels overbearing. I was genuinely impressed at how fresh the game feels in a very ripe market. Throw in a handful of fun but fairly easy boss fights and you won't be short of things to do in the game. It just has such a confidence about it. I guess the biggest takeaway from the gameplay is that you never feel like you know what will be around the next corner. Despite a simplistic set of gameplay mechanics, I couldn't confidently say, yep, I know what's around that corner, and the game is all the better for it. In many ways, the mechanics are as linear as it gets, but the gameplay is far from it, and the addition of both classic adventure style items used with the quirky apparel mechanic worked really nicely. Fans of co-op will also be pleased to hear that there is more than enough puzzling for you guys to enjoy. These are accessible from the main menu and offer a good deal of challenge and fun. There are a couple of moments in the game that require you to do a very specific action to progress. Without spoilers, some of these I found only out of luck because I pretty much got stuck and then kicked everything in sight. Other than these minor frustrations that in fairness weren't really that difficult, they just require some lateral thinking, the game is a fair one. I think I know you guys pretty well, at least I would like to think I do, and many of you have played vast quantities of games and know that feeling you sometimes get with a game. That one where playing it is just a pleasure, punctuated by the occasional laugh out loud moments. That's what I got with Pikaniku. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20. For any of you familiar with art or creating digital art, the game seems to use simplistic vector-based models with a flat, charming 2D aesthetic lavished in colour. To say I'm a fan of this art style is an understatement. In a world flooded with 2D pixel art, much of which hasn't been given the time or attention it deserves, the simplistic yet wonderfully detailed visuals of Pikuniku are a breath of fresh air. Detail is the name of the game here. From small touches when you interact with certain objects, to the way the birds fly away when you approach, down to the absurdity of a game of the local sport. It all looks brilliant. This, I would say, would have been enough for me, but throw in the frequent visual curveballs like this one, where the game almost becomes an endless runner, and you're just getting so much visually. Some people will look at Pikanuku and say, Oh, those graphics are rubbish. They aren't 3D. It's just another indie game. Trust me, look in the comments, you'll find them. I have three words for you. You. Are. Wrong. Go away. I know the last bit wasn't part of the three, you get the picture. Character design is equally interesting, with an array of unusual folk to interact with along your journey. Visuals score 17 out of 20. The game has a very unique take on audio. It might not be for everyone. Sometimes the musical score is comprised from an abstract series of sounds strung together and layered to create a final piece. I found that as the game progressed, this got better overall, with standout moments being the boss fights or moments of action. Sound effects fit the visuals perfectly and the strange sounds to indicate character speech work really well. HD Rumble is also excellent with an array of haptic feedback throughout the game complementing the on-screen proceedings. We hear the word quirky used quite a bit to describe anything from fashion sense to people, but it seems to work well to describe Pikaniku's audio approach. I think most will love it, but there are sometimes overly frequent quiet segments. Although intentional, they may not appeal to all. I give audio 16 out of 20. At launch, the game will be £10.52, €11.69 or $11.69 and for me, that is a fantastic price. When you factor in the excellent story, great gameplay, then it excels despite its relatively short runtime of 4-5 hours. 
throw in the ability to play through with a friend, and what more could you want? This is an unquestionable purchase for me. I would be very surprised if you picked this up and didn't enjoy it. With a story that isn't the longest, but a ton of hidden collectibles, areas and trophies to find, and the aforementioned couch co-op, value is on point for what amounts to another Devolver Digital success. Value scores 19 out of 20. Pikuniku is both entirely strange and instantly familiar. You'll laugh out loud within the first five minutes and spend the majority of your playtime with a large, childlike grin on your face. Whether enjoyed alone or with kids or friends, it caters remarkably well. It scores a switch-up score of 89%. One of my favourite games in a long time. I loved it. Remember guys, we give away a free Nintendo Switch game every single month to the subscriber most active on the channel. And as always, thank you to our Patreons. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya!